Welcome to Trophy TV, it is the match reaction, Everton nil, Brentford nil at Goodison Park today. Bit of a rubbish game, if I'm being perfectly honest. And a, a big two points dropped opportunity today for Everton has got away from Sean Deitch and his men. And frustrating, and, but they've now fallen into the relegation battle. They're in, they're in trouble now in terms of where they're going to be because the games we've had at Goodison... We should have been racking up these points going into what is a very difficult month of games and we just can't get a win and we can't score a goal and we've wasted so many games. We've won one out of six home matches this season, which is diabolical. You know, two victories all season and we play you know, next time he plays December, which is just absolutely woeful in anyone's you know, by anyone's books. It's absolutely woeful. And that's where we are. Uh, the team, the manager left the core in, dropped Mangala, brought Dwight McNeil back into the side, had Calvert Lewin through the middle, had Lindstrom and Njai on the wings. And you know what? I thought Everton actually made a, quite a good start of the game, got at Brentford, had a couple of efforts on goal, Flecken made a really good, so probably the only save he had to make in the whole game of any note. Early on, a ball in, I think it was Calvert Lewin that flicked it and he, he was going one way and readjusted and made a good save. That was the only save. I think he had five saves to make and the other four were routine catches. There was nothing of any note in them, but that one was a really smart save. And we seen to, we were knocking the ball, you know, in behind. We had Njai causing them issues off, off the wing and a couple of overlaps early on. But Everton have got this habit of, when they start well like that, it dissipates into nothing if they haven't scored a goal. It's almost like they lose belief in what they're doing or they just think, you know what, that hasn't worked. We won't, won't do that again. And we allow Brentford to come into the game and they, there was big gaps. You can see why they had been conceding two goals a game until today. And you can also see why they'd lost every away game because they just give you opportunities and Sadly, Everton's final, you know, final third play is really poor. There's no patterns of play. It's clearly not worked on the way we, the way we break out to break teams down. And, and as well as all that, individual players making wrong decisions, not, you know, not shooting when they had the opportunity to delay and, and Jai is a big one for that. Goes past people like they're not there, gets it on the edge of your seat and then takes too long to get a shot away and it's gone or hesitates when he could square it and then ends up trying to use his other foot and falls over. Little moments like that, that could be key in a game. And everything else in that first half was Garner shooting from 25, 30 yards or, you know, we wasted a couple of corners. We had one that Tarkovsky had the back across, keeper saved it. But everything with Everton is just so telegraphed. Everything, you know, we have... Dwight McNeil taking corners, back post in swinging corner every single time, never mixes it up, doesn't go near post with one. You know, it's just the same thing all the time. So against big lads, big centre-backs and a big goalie, it's kind of easy to defend against. And that's how the game started panning out then. That start that I was talking about, which was quite positive, just disappeared. And Brentford got a control of the game. You know, they had one, Pickford, Jordan Pickford had to make a really good save from Wisser. I thought he was offside the lines and didn't put his flag up. Pickford's made a really good save. Brentford got a corner from it. So, you know, it's a key moment in the game that had he slotted. You know, you're coming from behind again, aren't you? Never mind, great at that. The game was sort of petering out in the first half. It was a slow pace game, I have to say that. Had almost like a friendly feeling to it as... It was quite flat in Goodison anyway. There'd been a brilliant display by the 1878s. Uh, the crowd were, you know, trying to create this atmosphere, but um, it was sort of getting flat towards half time. And then there was a moment that, you know, Brentford got a corner. The corners come in as a flick on to the far post, and Pickford went for it with North Guard, and it, it went out. And you're thinking, Okay, we've got, you know, we sort of got away with that because there was no, no one reacted to the first contact. And the, a couple of screams from sort of like the Gladys Street, but nothing, 
like over you know nothing major but then Jordan was in a lot of pain obviously and then um, the referee eventually gets called over to the screen once he goes to the screen you know that it's a red card and, and Norgard was Norgard was given his marching orders and then it was can Everton break down 10 men we're not the way we play isn't conducive to playing against 10 men we don't move the ball particularly well there's no like I said before, patterns of play, which is going to overstretch 10 men. And Brentford coped quite comfortably till half-time. The manager had an opportunity at half-time to change it, formation-wise or, or, you know, personnel. <coughs> excuse me, personnel-wise. He chose to leave it. And the second half was flat. Brentford coped. Brentford looked like the team with 11 men at times, and we looked like we had 10. They were the only team really playing any football in the second half. We still continue to hit long diagonal balls up towards Calvert-Loon and nothing really came of it you know we'd had a couple of moments of shots getting blocked after good play a couple of times he got in round the back and just couldn't find the right ball and the game did start to sort of slip into that zone of you know it, a point it was looking like a point despite Brentford having 10 men they made some really positive substitutions put a couple put Sharder on put Thiago on had had a great chance with Lewis Potter great ball down the line Potter running into Everton's box whipped it but kept it too close to Jordan Pickford Pickford made a really good save it come just behind fortuitously just behind and Bumo he ended up laying it back and Jensen tried to whip one in and has just hit it over the bar and the warnings were there for Everton. And they got in a couple more times. Shardar who come on as a sub and the other side again and Bumo but couldn't really work the space. And Everton, you know, you were on the edge of your seat biting your nails thinking these could nick this here. Sean Dykes made a change and brought on Beto and went more 4 4 2, took the core off and took Lindstrom off and put Mangala on as well, went 4 4 2. And but Everton had two strikers in the box. There was only Dwight McNeil tried to put one cross in. After that, everything was so static and slow that Brentford were able to make sure they were picking men up. So by the time it did come back and Ashley Young was trying to put a ball in, they were sort of marked. The only We had one, one good move which resulted in a cross which Beto added about 40 yards over the bar. And other than that, Beto had a shot, which, to be honest, would have gone in, I think, if it, but it was a really strong block, which kept it out. And the game fizz, fizzled out, and it, you know, it ended nil-nil. Brentford have got the first point away from home, the first clean sheet. Everton, one goal in four games now, I think it is, they've scored. Um, no goals in the last three matches. And, you know, teams have won below us. You know, Palace have got a great result at Villa. Got a 2-2 with Villa. Wolves have gone to Fulham and won four goals to one. So they're only two points behind Everton now. You know, Leicester below Everton because they got beat by Chelsea. And Everton are right in it now. Right in the relegation zone. They'd had a buffer. It should play tomorrow, of course. They'd had a, a buffer, a good buffer on Wolves, a good buffer on others. And they've blown it. Not winning games, missing opportunities and... Going in now to games against Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, City. And when you look at it on paper, there's not going to be much change out of them games. Now, of course, it can, of course, we can win those, you know, some of those games with good fortune or a dodgy decision or whatever. You can win those games, but on paper, it, it looks really, really difficult. Wolves at home looks difficult now. They're four games unbeaten. They've won the last two. And, We've allowed ourselves and put ourselves into a relegation battle. We've, you know, the, the club or the manager has talked about us being in a relegation battle almost from day one, which wasn't the case. We're 48 points last, last season. And now we are in it. We've got a self fulfilling prophecy. We're right in the middle of it now. So we're going to have to garner some points from places we didn't expect to get them from. And, um, and that's just the way it is. Uh, man of the match for Everton. I'm going to say Jordan Pickford. I don't think anybody else. Garner done a lot of work, but, but his passing gave away some really cheap passes today. So, but, I, so, but I still think rather he was the best of the outfield players, but Jordan Pickford made two big saves, first half and second half. 
and he for me is a I'm giving him man of the match today. That is it. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And you know, are you happy? Are you happy with a point? Um how do we how do we turn this around? How do we get ourselves away from danger that we're in? Are you calm? I spoke to someone after the game, they were more than happy with the manager, more than happy with what's going on. Seventeenth was was the uh, was the the target of the person I spoke to after. So he, ever, again, everyone sees the game absolutely differently, don't they? Um, if we can get seventeenth, that's great. Was the target? So fair enough. That's not how I feel personally. I think this team, this club, should be much higher than that with the personnel they've got. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. You aiming for seventeenth? The seventeenth, brilliant. For this season, let me know. That is it. Uh, hit the like, subscribe. Have a great weekend. See you later.